Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to start to by talking about the cost of living. As you mentioned on numerous occasions, this is an issue that's being discussed at dinner tables around the country. We know that you have cut the fuel excise for six months and you've also announced some one-off payments that will bring some relief, but don't we need long-term solutions? Well, what we have put in place is significant structural tax reform, which is delivering more money into people's pockets on a permanent basis. And so we did um, deliver $40 billion worth of tax relief since the pandemic began. We focused on low and middle income earners. We've obviously expanded that in the, in the budget uh, just uh, earlier this week. Um, but we've also provided immediate cost of living relief now with um, the changes, as you say, to the fuel excise and other one-off payments. The changes that we've made around our electricity investments and the stability of our grid is not only delivering a smaller carbon footprint, but also helping to reduce electricity prices by nearly 10% in the last two years. We put in place um, very significant investments into childcare now worth more than $10 billion a year. Uh, which is seeing 250,000 families being better off by more than $2,000 on average. All of these uh, government initiatives that are designed to help alleviate cost of living pressures. And what is in this budget for young people? There was a noticeable absence in this budget to address rising costs for renters. And just yesterday with the Prime Minister suggesting that those struggling with rent increases should focus on buying a home. But what is your advice? to young people and students who are struggling with the rising cost of living? So the first thing is we already provide you know, more than $5 billion a year to rental for rental assistance. So that, that's a Commonwealth payment, which is helping people uh, who rent. Uh, we've also helped young people get into their first home uh, with the first home super saver scheme, uh, with the home guarantee scheme. We've expanded that in this budget to provide more opportunities and there's 160,000 first home buyers that have come into the market over the last year and programs like Home Builder have made a difference. Um, in this budget, there was a big investment in skills and that is gonna really help young people. Uh, whether you're going into the care workforce, we put another 15,000 places there, whether it's the $2.8 billion for apprenticeships, which are gonna see apprentices, whether you're a hairdresser, a chef or a tradie, um, receive up to $5,000 and the employer receive up to $15,000. Um, those incentives are making a real difference. Uh, and then we'll put in place long-term structural reform. We're encouraging more women to get into non-traditional trades. We're investing more in STEM, um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and there's also been significant investment in our universities over the course of the pandemic. Um, whereas we're... And, there's a big investment in this budget of more than $2 billion in helping to build the relationships between our universities and our industries to translate um, uh, innovation here into Australia into good commercial outcomes. So right across the board, there are measures that are designed to help young people into work, um, into better paying and highly skilled jobs, uh, as well as um, the broader measures that apply to them. I also wanted to touch on the environment. Just mm -hmm. last week, school students gathered at Kirribilli House to protest against a lack of climate action. And in response, a member of your party said that students should remain in school and advocate for change by being informed citizens. But on the other hand, one of our editors here at Yahoo has had his two kids at home this week because they can't go to school because the school is flooded. And it's predicted that climate change will lead to more frequent and more devastating disaster events, such as the recent and current flooding so shouldn't the government be allocating more than just 0.2% of the budget towards climate action? Well, we've actually committed more than $20 billion uh, for uh, investments in the transition that's occurring across the economy as we uh, reduce our carbon footprint. Now that technology investment roadmap and the $22 billion that we've invested, we've committed um, is going to leverage more than $80 billion of private sector investment. So in this budget, there was money for microgrids, which is small scale solar or wind for remote communities um, uh, who, who, who aren't connected to the grid. There was more money for clean hydrogen, which is going to be an important 
um, uh, fuel into the future, uh, lower emission fuel. Um, there's more money um, to ensure that we have the stability of the grid. Uh, there's more money um, that we've been pouring into Snowy 2.0, which is the biggest you know, pumped hydro facility here in, in the country, but also it's going to be um, effectively a battery for the east coast of Australia. We're investing in transmission, we're investing in, in distribution, we're investing right across um, the energy uh, transition. And so there's a good story to tell. Our emissions are down by more than 20% on 2005 levels. The same cannot be said for other commensurate countries. We have committed to net zero by 2050. Global glo um, the global challenge of climate change is, is not just real, it's critical and important. Um, and so that's why we're continuing to in invest in a responsible and considered way. And finally, there's some concern that jumping on the government's 5% deposit scheme is risky in the face of rising interest rates and a forecasted drop in property prices. Analysis shows that if I were to buy a home for $800,000 in Sydney at the end of this year using the government's home guarantee scheme, my equity, which started at 5%, could drop to negative 6% by the end of 2024. Do you think that first home buyers might be taking up a risk with this scheme in sliding into the red? Well, it's not for me to give individual financial advice to your listeners and viewers today, and that will be a matter for them. Um, but I know that people are looking for opportunities to get into the uh, housing market for the first time. And once you do get a foot in the door, um, that's really important to your long-term economic security. So uh, I think that this program has been successful. Obviously, um, we work in conjunction with the banks um, and people need to, to work through their individual financial circumstances with their primary lender. Um, but this initiative from the government is helping, for example, single parents with a deposit as low as 2% to get into, into the market. And that's a positive. Treasurer Josh Eidenberg, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.